use your boomerang to hit the off switch. I'm on it. Get ready to catch. Just gotta hit that button. Oh no! I'm soaring just like a bird. Whoa! Fine, hero. Hey, Katie. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm glad you are, Leo. But this is Kyle. Hey, Junior Ranger Kyle. I found a bird and guess what? He forgot how to fly. I think he really wants to join the other birds in the sky. So I wanted to teach him how to fly and I was hoping that you and Katie could come over to Codfish Island in New Zealand to help me. New Zealand? Sure. Awesome. Here's a photo of the bird. Ranger out! Ranger out! Wow, look at that bird! Let's send the photo to Katie. Maybe she knows more about him. Are you there, Katie? Hi, Leo. Can you find more information about the bird? I'm already on it. Did you find anything about the bird? Um, most, Leo. There it is. The kakapo. It's also known as the owl parrot. That's because the kakapo looks a bit like an owl. I see. So Kyle found a kakapo that forgot how to fly. Actually, not only is the kakapo the heaviest parrot in the world, it's also the only parrot in the world that doesn't fly. Kakapos live on the ground. So he can't fly, but he wants to join other birds in the sky? Let's head to New Zealand immediately to see how we can help. Huh? What's that sound? <laughs> Ranger Rocky! Welcome to New Zealand, Junior Rangers. I was hoping to find female kakapos by luring them with the kakapos mating call. There are very few kakapos left. There used to be a lot of kakapos in New Zealand. But when other animals like cats, ferrets, and weasels were brought to the islands, the kakapos no longer lived in peace. There are now less than 250 kakapos left in the world. To save the remaining kakapos, all of them were moved to three small islands in New Zealand where they are protected. The main island is Codfish Island. Good luck, Junior Rangers! Bye, Ranger Rocky! Let's go find Kyle on Codfish Island. Glad you made it. I could really use your help. I'm teaching him how to fly. I don't think that's going to work, Kyle. That's a kakapo, one of the heaviest parrots in the world. His wings are too small to carry his heavy body. Kakapo? Ah, uh, did you hear that, little buddy? You can't fly. Poor kakapo. I guess he just wants to fly like the other birds. There must be a way we can help him. Are you sure about this, Katie? Done. Now let's give it a try. Jetpack, activate. Whoa! Look at him go! Hmm. It looks like the kakapo doesn't know how to control the jetpack. That could be a problem. <gasps> we have to save the kakapo before he gets hurt. Jetpack, activate! I can't reach him! The kakapo might crash into a tree! We need to stop the jetpack! Kyle, use your boomerang to hit the off switch! I'm on it! Get ready to catch! Just gotta hit that button! Oh no! Gotcha! Good work, guys. I guess we need to think of something else if we want to help him fly, Katie. Great catch, Leo. Thanks, Kyle. That aim was perfect. Well, I couldn't have done it without my boomerang. Oh, where is my boomerang? Did somebody drop this? Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. What are you up to now? We're trying to teach a kakapo to fly. I'm afraid that won't work, Leo. All the kakapos have lost their flying ability a long time ago. So, where is this kakapo? <gasps> we had him try on Hero's jetpack, 
but it went out of control. The kakapo was afraid of us because he thinks we'll hurt him. It's okay, Katie. We'll make it right. We have to be very careful. Hero! Did you see that, Junior Rangers? The kakapo may not be able to fly, but he sure can run and climb trees. I'm so sorry I made you try on the jetpack. I did it because I thought it would help you fly. I guess we just need to accept that kakapos don't belong in the air anymore. You're right, Kyle. We should accept that kakapos can't fly. But that doesn't mean they don't have other strengths. <laughs> Ready to show them what you've got? On your mark, get set, go! Woohoo! You can do it! That was an amazing race! Let's hope the Kakapo lives happily on the ground from now on. Huh? A bird? It sounds exactly like a drill! Whoa! Whoa! I think we found the bloodhound! Wow! So it was the bird that made all those sounds. I wonder what type of bird it is. I sent you a photo, Katie. Can you find more information about it? I'm on it, Leo. It seems this bird is a superb lyrebird. A superb lyrebird is an Australian songbird. It has the amazing ability to learn and copy sounds. Adult male lyrebirds have a beautiful tail of fanned feathers, but it takes about seven years for its tail to grow to its full length. Hmm, this lyrebird doesn't have its tail, but male lyrebirds tend to show off. He's probably a young male. Hey, I recognize that sound. That's a kookaburra. It's another lyre bird. But look at its tail. This lyre bird is definitely older than that one. And that sounds like a cockatoo. No, it's another lyre bird. Is there any sound these lyre birds can't copy? I don't think so, Kyle. Wow! Now they're singing and dancing! Bravo! I don't think the older lyre birds like the sound you made. Well, he does sound very different from them. You can only copy what's around you. <gasps> Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! What do you mean, Ranger Rocky? Lyrebirds tend to copy the sounds they hear from their environment. In the wild, lyrebirds copy the noises of animals in the forest, because that's what they've heard all their life. Then, they'll use it in their song. But the younger lyrebird only makes sounds you can hear in the city. That's right, Leo. That means, unlike the other lyrebirds, he must have spent most of his life in the city. He's different. Cheer up, lyrebird. I can't sing either. La 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 la! See? But it doesn't matter. I'm still the coolest guy I know. Singing and dancing might not be a big deal to us, Kyle, but they are a big part of the male lyrebird's life. It's how they find their partner. In fact, male lyrebirds often get together to practice their song and dance. But the other lyrebirds are avoiding him. If he doesn't learn how to sing and dance like the other lyrebirds, he might not be able to find a partner. Then we've got to fix this. Let's teach him how to sing and dance like the other lyrebirds. You have our word. We're going to turn you into a liar bird superstar. I think
think he's ready for the performance of his life. But how are we going to show him off to the other lyre birds? I have just the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, animals of the forest, put your hands, paws, and claws together for the lyre bird. Yes, he's doing it. He's dancing perfectly. All that's left is his song. What's going on? Why did he stop? I can't watch. No way, don't leave, uh, just try again. Uh oh, that sounded like a <gasps> dingo. <gasps> Be careful, Katie. Thanks, Ranger Rocky. Hero, come back, it's dangerous. He did it! Is everybody all right? We sure are, thanks to the lawyer bird. Lyrebirds are impressed with him now. They're singing and dancing together. I guess it's not a bad thing to be different. Sometimes all we have to do is be ourselves. Oh, I just love a happy ending, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> They're eggs that have been painted. We celebrate Easter with them. I know what we can do with the eggs, Katie. Let's have an Easter egg hunt for Hero. We can hide the eggs and Hero will find them. That sounds exciting, Leo. Hi, Junior Ranger Kyle. Happy Easter. What are you up to today? Hi, Leo. Happy Easter to you too. I'm on an Easter egg hunt and look what I found in the bush. It's a giant Easter egg. It's painted green, and it's still warm. Whoa, it's almost as big as your face, Kyle. I know, right? What bird could have laid such a huge egg? Could it be a giant chicken? I don't think there are giant chickens, Kyle, but I can look for more information on my computer. Cool, while you search for more information, I'll search for more Easter eggs. Ranger out. There it is. The egg doesn't belong to a giant chicken. It belongs to an emu. An emu. That's right. Emus are the second largest birds in the world after the ostriches. While their eggs are smaller than the ostrich, an emu egg is about eight times the size of a chicken egg. By the way, it wasn't painted green. So nobody painted it? It's supposed to be green? That's right. Like the ostriches, emus are flightless birds that live on the ground. Because of their large size, their wings are too small and weak for them to fly. Their nests are found on the ground where they keep their eggs warm. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Leo. Look, I found another egg. I'm so going to win the egg hunt this year. Looks like you're having a blast at the hunt, Kyle. We have some information about the giant egg you found. It's not an Easter egg, it's an emu's egg. What? 
An emu's egg? That's right. And it's not painted green. It is green. And we think the emu egg was separated from its nest. We have to return the egg to its parents immediately. But I don't see any nests around here. Send us your location, Kyle. We'll be right over to help. And try to keep the egg warm. On it. Ranger out. Ranger out. Hey, guys. Hi, Kyle. Sorry you had to cut your Easter egg hunt short. Where did you put the emu egg? It's right here. Safe and warm. That's the emu's egg? I got a little bored waiting for you guys. And I had some paint left over. It's Easter. I thought it'd be fun. What do you think? I think it's more important that we get the egg safely back to its nest. Guys, did you hear that? Could that be an emu? Wait for us, Kyle. Could they be looking for their egg? I'll go get it, Katie. Be careful, Leo. I really hope it's theirs. Hi there. Are you looking for this? Uh, wait, come back. What happened? The emus don't recognize the egg because of all the paint. There's no time to waste. We need to catch up to them. Jetpack activate. I'm right behind you, Leo. I have an idea. Surely they'll recognize their egg now. Good thinking, Leo. Woohoo! Bestie Sarema! Look, emus! I got the paint off! It's a green emu egg. They're going too fast to look at the egg. Who's going too fast? Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Why are you chasing after the emus, Junior Rangers? We're trying to return an egg to them, but we scared them off instead. Chasing after them might not be the best solution, Leo. You see, emus have long, powerful legs that allow them to travel great distances. Sometimes they go up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. How else can we get their attention, Ranger Rocky? Emus are curious animals. A shiny object will definitely get their attention. Hey, Kyle, I think your ATV could use a wash. Uh, what? Wow, I didn't know my ATV could sparkle like that. Let's hope it's shiny enough to attract the emus. Why aren't they here yet? Where could the emus be? Be patient, Junior Rangers. I have a feeling they are very nearby. <gasps> a shiny ATV works. Great plan, Leo. Oh, and they see the egg. Yes, it is their egg. We did it. We returned the egg to them. Mommy Emu must be really happy to be sitting on her egg and keeping it warm again. Actually, Kyle. It is the male emu that keeps the eggs warm. Oh, that's a good dad. So, do you think I'll be able to get my ATV back? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we managed to reunite the egg with the emus. What's the matter, Hero? Did your name sign fall off? Don't worry, Hero. I'm sure we can fix it. Hey, was that a penguin? I think it likes your doghouse, Hero. <laughs> Shh! I think you're scaring it, Hero. Hi, penguin. Don't worry about Hero. He won't bite. Oh, you have yellow eyes. Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. Don't be shy, penguin. Hi, Katie. So what did you find? Hi, Leo. This penguin is called a yellow-eyed penguin. It is one of the rarest penguins in the world. That means there aren't many of them left. Yellow-eyed penguins are only found in parts of New Zealand and some islands around it. 
Wow, so we're very lucky to meet one. What do they eat? Yellow-eyed penguins eat fish and squid, which they catch in the sea. However, their natural home is in the forest of New Zealand. So after a day out at sea, they return to their nests deep in the forests. Since yellow-eyed penguins are endangered, it's important that they have more babies. That's why this penguin should live in a place where there are other yellow-eyed penguins. Which means we should take it home. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you have a yellow-eyed penguin with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. It was hiding in Hero's doghouse. Perhaps the yellow-eyed penguin thought the doghouse was its nest. Yellow-eyed penguins are known for their loud calls. They use these calls to greet or look for one another. Unfortunately, many of the forests where yellow-eyed penguins live have been destroyed. Another danger for them are larger animals that hunt them and, of course, humans. Many tourists love to come and see these rare animals. Unfortunately, some of these people do not behave in the right way. They get too close to the yellow-eyed penguins, make too much noise, or take photos with the camera flash on. These actions scare the penguins. So, if people want to see the yellow-eyed penguins, they should watch them from far away and remain quiet. Right, Ranger Rocky? Correct. Yellow-eyed penguins are very shy especially during breeding season. They do not like much interaction. That's why they nest deep in the forests that are near the sea. They even prefer to nest away from each other. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Look, Leo, there are two yellow-eyed penguins there. They are making the loud calls Ranger Rocky told us about. A yellow-eyed penguin is shouting, too. The people here call the yellow-eyed penguin hoi-ho, which means noise shouter. So they call them hoi-hos. Hey, what's that? Oh, no, there are two tourists over there, and they are taking photos. The penguins are running away. They must have been frightened by the camera flashes. Leo, we have to stop them from coming too close to the penguins. Hero, where are you going? There he is. Maybe we can use sticks to build a fence. A fence could stop the tourists from coming closer to the penguins. Hmm, no. That would take much too long. Yeah, you're right. I know. Do you have markers, Leo? Yes, I do. Here. Hero, I think we'll need one more stick. Great idea, Katie. Let me help you. There. That should do it. And there's Hero, just in time. Yes, it's working! Hooray! Look, the penguins are coming back. So, what should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers! Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! If you want to find the yellow-eyed penguin's nest, just listen for the hoi Ho's call. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the yellow-eyed penguin's nest, you have to listen for the hoi Ho's call. Good luck! Here! Is that the hoi Ho's call? Yes, it is! I think we found the yellow-eyed penguin's home. Look! There's another penguin. It must be our penguin's mate. We did it! We found the yellow-eyed penguin's home! Great job, everybody! Hooray! Yay! We found 
found a yellow-eyed penguin in our garden. We learned that the yellow-eyed penguin is rare and endangered and that they live in the forest. So we took it back to its home where it can be safe. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got from Grandpa and Grandma. It's a toy that makes animal sounds, like so. Do you know which animal this sound belongs to? That's right. It belongs to an owl. An owl makes a hooting sound. What's that scary sound? It's up there. Hey, it looks like an owl. But it doesn't sound like the owl from my toy. Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi, Leo. I've received the photo. But why did you say it's strange? It doesn't hoot like other owls. It makes these scary noises instead. There it is again. How interesting. Let me see what I can find out about it. Great. I'm coming up. Hi, Katie. So why does this owl not hoot? Hi, Leo. Well, not all owls sound the same. And this owl is a barn owl. A barn owl. I see. So a barn owl communicates in a different way than other owls. That's right. But like most owls, barn owls are nocturnal, which means they are active during the night. How can they hunt when they are so loud? Of course barn owls don't call when they hunt. They also have fine, soft feathers that help them fly silently when they hunt their prey. This makes barn owls very quiet and great hunters. However, adult barn owls returning to their nest may sometimes call out to their young. Wow! So what do barn owls eat? Barn owls eat different small animals, such as mice, rats, birds, and fish. I see! Where can they be found? Except for Antarctica, these birds can be found almost anywhere in the world. They are often called barn owls because they are commonly found in barns. But these owls can live in other places, such as grasslands and forest edges. I think the garden is no place for the barn owl to live. It needs a better place to hunt. We should bring it back to its home. Come and join us. It looks like nobody's here. What's that sound? I can't see anything. What is it, Barn Owl? Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Ah, you found me. Welcome to the Grasslands, Junior Rangers. I see you've brought along a Barn Owl. How is it able to find you in the dark? That is because Barn Owls can see and hear very well. They can even find their prey in total darkness, so they are excellent hunters. The barn owl prefers to hunt along the edge of woods or small forests where it can find a lot of small animals. For their nests, they choose places like tree holes. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. We just need to cross this water. The barn owl's home should be on the other side. It must be happy to be so close to home. Hey, wait for us, little friend. How do we cross this water? It's a small bridge. Great. What was that? It's the barn owl. It sounds like it's in trouble. We have to hurry. Over there! It's stuck! Oh no! Let's free it! Hold still, little friend. I'm only trying to help. It's the net. The barn owl is afraid of it. We should try to take its attention away from the net to calm it down. Let's try this. 
It's the animal sound toy. You brought it with you. Here, little friend. Listen to this. <coughs> And it's off! Phew! Great job, everyone! <laughs> to find the barn owl's home, you have to look for a tree hole. Good luck! <laughs> what is that? It's a tree hole! Could it be the barn owl's home? It's the perfect size, so it must be its home! Great work, Hero! We're coming over! We did it! We found the barn owl's home! Great job, everybody! Yay! Hooray! Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Kyle! Hey, Leo! Well, I found a bird, and I can't quite figure it out. It's a little furry and has a long, thin beak. But guess what? It has no wings! Here, I took a photo of it! A bird with no wings? That's odd. Sure is. I found it circling around the same place last night, poking the ground with its beak. And it was screeching loudly. I think it might have lost something. That sounds like a real mystery. I can look for more information about the bird on the computer. Great. Then we'll head over to help you solve the mystery, Kyle. Cool. I'll share my location in New Zealand. See you both in a bit. Ranger out. Ranger out. All right. Let's go find out more about this mysterious bird. It seems the mystery bird is a kiwi. Kiwi? Like the kiwi fruit? Do they share the same name because they're both furry? That's actually not fur on the kiwi bird, but thin hair like feathers. Cool! And does it really not have wings? No, it does have wings. Tiny ones that are hidden under its feathers. They're too small to help the kiwi fly, though, so it gets around by walking on the ground instead. So the bird that Kyle found is a kiwi. That's one mystery solved. All we have left is to figure out what it lost. Let's head to New Zealand to help the kiwi. Oh, it looks like paw prints. They look so big. There's a whole trail of them. Three eggs, four eggs. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to New Zealand. Cool stilts, Ranger Rocky. What were you doing up there? I was just making sure those eggs are safe. There have been reports of missing eggs from birds' nests. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But no worries, Junior Rangers. I'm on the case. We're here to help Kyle with a kiwi who seems to have lost something, too. Ah, kiwis are fascinating birds. Unlike most birds, they dig burrows instead of building nests in the trees. And they are the only birds in the world with nostrils at the end of their long beaks. They're super sniffers. Exactly. Kiwis use their super nose to find worms and bugs in the ground to eat. They like eating seeds and grubs, too. I better get back to work. Those eggs aren't going to count themselves. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Bye, Bye Junior Rocky. Rocky. We better get to work, too. What are you doing up there? Oh, hello, guys. I figured it out. This little bird probably lost its home, so I built it a new one. Do you like your new nest? Oh, do you not like it? That's a kiwi, Kyle. Kiwis don't live in nests in the trees. They live in burrows on the ground. Oh, a kiwi? Sorry, kiwi. I didn't know you lived in a burrow. It's searching again. What could it be searching for? That's what we're here to solve. The mystery of the kooky kiwi. It brought us to its burrow. We should search its home for clues. I'm on it. Looks like your standard burrow here. Dark. Cozy, burrowy. Ha! <laughs> What's this? A clue. It looks like fur. Let's check if it belongs to the kiwi. Hmm. It doesn't look like a match. Yes. It's a different color, which means... The kiwi has a jacket that's a different color? 
And the Kiwi's looking for it? No, Kyle. Kiwis don't wear jackets. It means the fur in the burrow belongs to another animal. An intruder. You're right, Katie. That makes more sense. But who could the intruder be? <laughs> what did you find, Hero? Paw prints. Kiwis don't leave such prints. They must belong to the intruder. Time to find out who this intruder is. I sent you a photo of the paw prints, Katie. A stoat? Stoats are mischievous animals that tend to disturb birds, particularly those living on the ground. There's more of them over here. Come on, let's follow the prints. Hopefully they'll lead us to the stoat. Over there, a stoat. It's the same color as the fur we found in the kiwi's burrow. Is it rolling an egg around? So that's what the kiwi is looking for, her egg. <laughs> Hero. Woohoo! Stoat chase. Stop right there. Huh? Where's everyone? Whoa, uh, excuse me. Ah! Come here. Wait a second. Where's the egg? Where's Hero? Over there. Got it. Phew. We did it. We found what the Kiwi was looking for. Here you go, Kiwi. Mystery solved. Mission accomplished, Detective Katie. Woohoo! Thanks for bringing us up here, Kyle. I'm looking forward to this hike. Do we have everything we need, Leo? I've got my tablet, water bottle, and some food. Let's see. I've got my rope, my water bottle, my binoculars. I've got my boomerang right here. Just your boomerang? It's all I need. Oh, not forgetting some hero snacks. <laughs> I think we have everything, Katie. Whoa, did you guys hear that? Now, what could that be? It came from our backpacks. What's it doing? Hey, be careful with my tablet. Let's take a picture of you, you curious bird. I sent you the photo, Katie. Can you check what bird it is? I'm on it, Leo. It seems this bird is a Kia. A Kia. A Kia is the world's only alpine parrot. It means it lives high up in the mountains. The Kia is easily recognizable by its distinct Kia call. Kia! <laughs> <laughs> You're one curious bird, aren't you? I think the Kia is trying to get friendly with you, Leo. <gasps> hey, that's the Kia Platypus One. Get that back, Kia. Kia! Kia! It's flying away with our key. We need that key to get back home or we'll be stuck here. We have to get it back. Let's use our jetpacks to go after the Kia. Got it, Leo. Jetpack, jetpack activate. activate. Follow that parrot. I'll catch up with you guys on my ATV. There. Good work, Katie. Let's go get our key back. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. No, if we scare him, he'll just fly away again. Katie mentioned that the Kia is a playful bird. What if we build something that'll distract it long enough for us to get our key back? Something to distract it. Hmm, I've got an idea. What are you thinking of, Katie? Okay, the first thing we need to do is, I call it the inside out cage. An inside out cage? That's right. The Kia will be attracted to the yummy berries and he'll try to get them. But since the berries are trapped inside the cage, there's no way he's going to get them. The Kia will be stuck outside as he tries to reach for the berries. So, instead of having the Kia in a cage, the inside-out cage keeps the Kia outside. That's right. 
And once he's too busy to pay attention to our key, that's our chance to get it back. Hero will sneak up to it and grab the key. An inside-out cage. I love it. Here it comes. Quick, everyone, hide. I hope it works. Me too. You can say that again, Hero. I would not underestimate the intelligence of the Kia Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! What do you mean, Ranger Rocky? The Kia doesn't have your everyday bird brain. They're highly intelligent. They can solve puzzles, and they even use tools to help them get food. Your inside-out cage might be a little too easy for this clever parrot. But who knows? Let's see what the Kia will do. I think he saw the berries. He dropped the key. Your turn, Hero. Be careful not to alert the Kia. There's no way the Kia will get to the berries. He's using a stick. No way. He's got the berries. Quick, Hero, get the key. How did he do that? Kias are puzzle solvers. Like other parrots, Kias have four toes on each foot. Two that point forward and two that point backward. That means they can use their feet just like hands. That's how it held the stick and used it to get the berries out so quickly. Wow, wow. that's impressive. You were right, Ranger Rocky. The Kia is too smart for us. Don't be disheartened, Katie. I'm sure you'll be able to find other ways to distract the Kia. Thanks, Ranger Rocky. I'll try checking my tablet again. There's something I have to attend to. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Bye, Bye Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. I found something else. It says here that the Kia gets into a playful mood when they hear a play call. When they hear other Kias make that sound, they drop everything and they start to play. A play call, huh? I think I know how we can get our key back. Come on, Kia, it's time to play. Whoa, whoa easy there. Now, Hero. Yes, he got it. It worked. Wow! Hey, Leo! You might want to turn around! Whoa! <laughs> I think they all want to play! <laughs> what an adventure! Ah! What's My that? eyes! I can't see a thing! Ugh, is, is everybody all right? I'm fine. Just a little blinded. What was that bright flash of light? Leo, Katie, I'm so sorry. I thought you guys were rare animals. <laughs> Hi, Hero. Are you all right? <laughs> you should have known it was you, Kai. Why did you ask us to meet you here? There's an animal photography competition coming up. I need your help to find a rare, beautiful animal so I can take the winning photo. But what's with the drone and the blinding flash? Oh, this is the Chimera 1000. Cool. Did you guys see that? What was that? That's my winning photo. Come on, Chimera 1000, do your thing. Let's see. It's just a bunch of colors. The photo looks blurred. We should remove the motion blur to see what's really there. Hmm, fine. I'll see what I can do. But I'm telling you, we're looking at a photo of an actual... Huh? What type of bird is it? Send the photo to me, Kai. I'll search for more information. Sure, Katie. One photo of the bird coming right up. It seems the bird is a male golden pheasant. Male golden pheasants are really colorful, while female golden pheasants are just brown in color. 
Golden pheasants are clumsy flyers. They prefer running instead of flying and spend most of their time on the ground. Some believe that golden pheasants bring good luck. <laughs> That'll get me a first prize. I must take a photo of the golden pheasant. But how are we going to find him? From what we've seen, he's pretty quick. Huh? What's that, Hero? A feather? Not just any feather. It belongs to the golden pheasant. Look, more feathers. I bet if we follow these feathers, they'll lead us right to him. No, the golden pheasant can't be seen in any of the photos. That's okay. I'm sure we'll find him again. We'll get you your winning photo. Thanks, Leo. But the only way we can take a picture of him is if he stays still. Hmm. What if we got him to dance instead? Dance? It says here that when a male golden pheasant wants to get the attention of a female golden pheasant, it dances. That's another way to stop him from running. But where are we going to find a female golden pheasant? That's him! Hide! It worked! He's approaching Hero! Okay, Hero, it's all up to you now. Try to look friendlier. He's getting closer! Can you try shaking your feathers, Hero? <laughs> I think he likes Hero! Now's your chance, Kai! It's a little dark here, so I'll have to raise the flash. Say cheese! No! Ranger Rocky! Ranger Rocky! <laughs> no! My winning photo! Where did the pheasant go? It's up in the trees, Leo. You see, golden pheasants are timid and shy. They might not be able to fly gracefully, but when startled, they can jump upwards really quickly. But why did you stop me from taking a photo of it? It wasn't the photo that was the problem. It was the flash. Golden pheasants can lose their colors if they're exposed to light for too long. Your camera flash might last for only a second, but for a bird that lives outdoors, every second makes a difference. I'll be on my way now, Junior Rangers. But remember, no flash photography allowed. Got it. Bye, Bye Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Ranger Rocky. So that's why the golden pheasant runs from bush to bush. Not only does he have to stay out of the light, he's always afraid. And we sure didn't help. Let's make it up to the pheasant, Rangers. Just have to turn this on, and it's done. Great. But what is it? And how is this going to help the golden pheasant get around the forest? Presenting the Camouflage Cloak. It creates an energy field that reflects whatever's around you, so you blend right in. It'll protect the pheasant from light rays, and it grants him the power of invisibility. Wow! No way! Prepare to be amazed. All you have to do is click your feet together like this. <gasps> he disappeared! <laughs> Where did he go? Your camouflage cloak is amazing, Kai! Now you can turn invisible whenever you like. You don't have to be afraid anymore. You can even walk under the sun. So, can I take a photo of you now? I promise, no flash. Uh-oh. The pheasant used the camouflage cloak on us. Oh, no! How are we going to find him now? He's invisible. Come out! I thought we had a deal. How are we going to take a photo of an invisible bird? Careful, Leo. That doesn't look very stable. Do you need our help? No, thanks, Katie. I can do this alone. As long as I'm very, very careful. <gasps> no! I'll get it next time. Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Jane. 
What's up? Hi, Leo. Zumi has created a bit of a situation. She destroyed a giant nest. Uh-oh. Are the birds all right? They are, but they are mad. Just look at their angry faces. What should we do, Leo? We should help them rebuild their giant nest, of course. Little birds with a giant nest? I have to see this. Now let's see what we've got here. These birds are called sociable weavers. Wow, that's a huge nest. It sure is, Leo. Sociable weavers build one of the largest nests. The biggest sociable weaver's nests can hold up to 400 birds with close to 100 nesting chambers. Some nests have been around for 100 years. The nest also sees plenty of guests. Other bird species, like the pygmy falcon, use the sociable weaver's nest for its own home. Vultures and eagles would rest on the wide roof. Other animals also use the nest for shade. Whoa, it's not just a nest. It brings animals together. Come on, Katie, let's check this out. Hi, Jane. Hi, Zumi. Who are we hiding from? <sighs> Angry birds. Cheer up, Zumi. We'll help you make it up to the weavers. Where is the nest anyway? All the way over there. Let's go. Oh, come on. I'm sure the sociable weavers are not that mad. Ow, ow, stop that! I was wrong! They're really mad! Ow! Please! We're just here to help! Let's retreat for now! They're leaving? <sighs> Is it over? Why did they return to their nest all of a sudden? Snakes! I see them! They're after the eggs! Come on, rangers. We've got to help protect the eggs. Here, Katie, take my grabber. You and Hero get the eggs to safety. On it, Leo. Jetpack activate. <laughs> Jane, Zumi, activate plan dust storm. Got it. Jetpack activate. <laughs> For you. Off you go now. It's working. The snakes are irritated by the dust. Nice work, Rangers. No sweat. There. The eggs should be safe here. But we can't keep the eggs here forever. We'll have to rebuild the nest as soon as possible. This looks like a big job. Speaking of big, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Hello, Junior Rangers. My, my, what do we have here? I see. If you'd like to rebuild the nest, there's something you should know. Sociable weavers work together to build their huge nest. While most weaver birds build nests by intertwining twigs and dry grasses together, like weaving a basket, sociable weavers tend to stack them. They continue to add more material to their nest, until it becomes a huge mega-nest. These hard-working birds don't put up with lazy or selfish behaviors either. Lazy sociable weavers may be chased away. It's a big job, but it's possible if we work together. <laughs> I have to leave now, but my friend would like to lend you rangers a hand. Or a trunk. Awesome! Bye, Bye Ranger Rocky! Come on, Rangers. Let's work together with the Weavers to rebuild the nest. All right. <laughs> nice and easy. OK, you go here. Over here, sociable Weavers. Over there. Slowly. Come, Zumi. Jetpack activate! <laughs> Ahem! We could really use your help. I'm gonna need more.
more twigs over here. <coughs> Thanks. It's coming together perfectly. I think we're about done. Katie, what's the final stage? We return the eggs, of course. Will you do the honors, Mr. Elephant? Accomplished. Katie. Aw, hero. Hi, Leo. Hi, Zari. What's that sound? It's coming from an annoying, noisy bird that seems to be following me everywhere. I think it's stalking me. Really? I don't think a bird would stalk a person. Can you send us a picture of the bird so we can find out more about it? You can send us a recording of the bird's call. The computer can analyze the sound and tell us what type of bird it is. Okay, sent. Let me know what you find out. Sure, stay on the line, Zari. Let's see what type of bird it is. It's an Asian call. They are found in a variety of habitats, from woodland and mangroves to gardens, parks, and even residential areas. You probably encountered different coals throughout the day, Zari. So there's no bird stalking me. But why are the coals making so much noise? That noise is the sound of a male's mating call. Male and female coals have different calls. They also look different. Males are bluish black and females are brown with white spots. Both have bright red eyes. If Zari heard the sound of a male's mating call, that means there's an Asian koal nearby looking for a girlfriend. We should go over and help him. We get to be matchmakers? Awesome! See you soon! Ranger out! Ranger out! Guys, please stop fighting! What's going on up there? It looks like two male koals are fighting over a female. Oh no! You poor thing. Don't worry, there's got to be a lady out there for you. Yeah, there's no need to fight. First, let's help you become more attractive so the ladies can't resist you. Any ideas on what we could do to help him? Hmm, we should improve his mating call. It'll be much better if he could sing sweetly like the sparrows. I'll teach him to sing better. <laughs> now you try. No, no, it's like this. This is not working. What if we help him look more attractive? Some birds attract females with their colorful feathers. He needs more color. We could make him a colorful crown? Good idea, Zari. Let's search for things around here that we can use to make the crown. There you go, little guy. Awesome. I think he's ready. Great. Now, Hero, fly up into the trees and help us find a female Asian coal. Good idea, Leo. I'm sure there's one up there somewhere. <laughs> Nothing in this tree. 
Let's try the next one. Did you find something, Hero? <gasps> Ranger, Ranger Rocky? Rocky? Hello, Junior Rangers. What are you doing in the tree, Ranger Rocky? I just released a bird that has recovered from an injury. Why do you have an Asian coal with flowers on his head? We're helping him find a girlfriend. Have you seen any female Asian coals? Yes, I have. The bird I just released is a female Asian coal. But a colorful crown is no way to a female coal's heart. Male Asian coals use their loud calls to attract females. The excited male chases the female along branches or trees. Asian coals engage in courtship feeding. This is when the male brings food, like fruits or insects, to the female. So food is the way to a female coal's heart. Then I'll just remove this. There, you're perfect the way you are. Is that the sound of a female coal's call? Yes, it certainly is. That means the female coal is still in the tree. Go get her, buddy. Here, take a piece of fruit to her. That's it. Show her how much you love her. Don't give up. Aww. You did it. That's so romantic. All right, Junior Rangers. Let's give the coal couple some privacy. Goodbye, coals. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day. Mission accomplished. Hit subscribe and click the like icon.